you ever feel like sometimes you just wake up on the wrong side of the bed and all of a sudden you're having the hardest day ever for no reason your body is completely exhausted you have no energy to do anything you can't think straight and you're just in a rut well i've been there many times and it's completely normal but i'm here to help you find healthy ways to deal with the difficult days we are not going to be out here ruining our lives and doing impulsive things that we're going to regret later like texting our exes indulging in habits that pushes us further away from our goals or neglecting ourselves our life and our future mm -mm. this video is going to teach you how to get out of a rut fast turn a sad day into a happy one start a new routine improve your mental health forget about all the negativity and avoid that spiral of constantly going back to square one when you're trying to get your life back on track so if you feel like everything is too much and you just want to do nothing for the entire day watch this video first <laughs> Oh hey, welcome to the new video background because your girl just moved out into her first ever apartment but I'll talk about that in another video which is coming very soon. This video is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how you're going to get your mood and day back on track. The way this video is structured is kind of like a day in my life vlog but a difficult day in my life vlog. And a quick disclaimer, you don't have to do all of the things that I outline in this video. To be honest, you can't physically fit in all of the steps I'm about to mention but I showcase them in my daily routine just to show you what solutions are possible and you can pick and choose what works for you. And before we jump right into the video, I wanted to mention that this video has been brought to you by Headspace, an app that will have a vital role in you getting your life back together. So I started using Headspace recently because I feel like for the last few months, my mental health has actually been very good, like the best it's ever been because of all of the daily practices that I implement into my life. However, I do still struggle with waking up on the wrong side of the bed and feeling like I have no energy to get on with the day. It's really weird. And on those days where I feel like everything feels a little bit harder than usual, I always prioritize using Headspace in my mornings and evenings. It is the perfect practice for those difficult days because it helps you soothe your anxiety and clear your mind so that you can get on with the day and think with more clarity. And I've tried a lot of methods to start meditating in the past and Headspace stuck with me because I love how easy it is to use. I love that they offer a range of courses and they try to suit everybody's needs. For example, stress and anxiety, work and productivity, grief, body image. I've just found that this is the most user-friendly platform to start on your meditation journey because it can be so intimidating and Headspace removes that for you. So if you want to see how Headspace might be helpful to you, then you can try it completely free for 60 days by clicking the link in the description. And since we're already talking about self-care, I want you to comment down below and let me know what your favorite practice of self-care is so that maybe even I can get inspiration. Chapter one, your morning routine on a difficult day. The first step is you're gonna wake up with dread. Oh, I know the feeling way too well. You feel like you haven't had enough sleep even if you did sleep like 10 hours. You're just laying there thinking of your entire to-do list and not wanting to leave your bed. You're starting to feel hopeless. Like, what's the point? Everybody's ahead of me. Nothing's working out. Everything keeps going wrong. And I keep procrastinating. All my days are blending in together. Let me just hide in my bed for eternity. But I'm not going to let you do that. The first thing you're going to do when you wake up is go on your phone. No, I'm not going to push you to leap out of bed. Don't use your phone. Do a workout first thing because you already feel tired and slumped, okay? We've got to be gentle with ourselves on days like this. So you're going to grab your phone, but you're still going to do something healthy. You're going to start consuming motivational content. This could be in the form of YouTube videos. You can go on TikTok. Just type in hashtag motivational. I do this all the time. And oh my God, the way it raises my vibration and my energy and gives me all of that inspiration that I would have otherwise lacked if I skip this step. AKA don't consume content that makes you feel worse. The next step is a morning meditation. You can stay in bed and be super cozy while doing this. Meditation can be as simple as closing your eyes in silence and just breathing in and out, in and out. Do not stress about this notion of all of your thoughts need to be out of your head. You need to have a completely empty mind. No, this is more about grounding yourself and staying present, being in the moment, not doing 101 other things, not having all of this screen time take over your entire day. You can use the Headspace app to make it even easier if you have a particular problem like anxiety or productivity. As someone who is obsessed with trying to level up their life and research what the 1% do, what all successful people's morning routine looks like, 99% of them include meditation. Why? Because it improves concentration it improves focus and productivity so you're actually getting more done you are actively working on your mental health by just carving out five minutes every morning to just think 
The third step is to change your identity. Now that you've meditated, you've taken a minute to just breathe, stay present, make sure you have a clearer mind for the rest of the day. Now you can think about where you want to go and what you want to achieve for the rest of the day. This is an amazing practice that I learned from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. He says that your habits are the way that you embody a particular identity. For example, if you spend your morning doing a deep clean, hoovering, cleaning your entire home, you are then embodying the identity of a clean an organized person. If you spend your entire day getting into a flow state, not procrastinating, getting your work done, taking off your to-do list, you are then embodying the identity of a productive, successful and hardworking person. But if you wake up and you neglect yourself and your life and your goals and your to-do list, then you are embodying the identity of a person who is and always will be in a rut. Of course, go easy on yourself, but you cannot just accept that, oh, I don't feel like doing anything today, so I'm not gonna do anything today. Because that one lazy day will turn into two lazy days, which will turn into three, which will turn into a month long rut. The only way to get out of a rut is to pick up a different habit which you're not doing already and do it gently. When thinking about the habits you're going to pick up, you are going to take part in a visualization of your dream self and you are going to embody that identity and this is going to be different and personalized to everybody's unique aspirations. Imagine your dream self. Who are you going to show up as? What does your dream future lifestyle entail? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? How are you getting closer to that ideal future lifestyle? So for example, my dream self, she wakes up early, she hits the gym, she eats healthily, she engages in self-care, she gets all of her work done without procrastinating. However, she doesn't overwork herself. She makes time in the evenings to just relax, take herself on a solo day, watch some Netflix, go out with friends. She balances her lifestyle and incorporates learning new skills like French, engaging in art, reading books, picking up new hobbies. So I used to imagine this ideal dream self and I thought, why can't I be her right now? Why can't I fake it till I make it and let me set my alarm clock a little bit earlier and then start training my body to wake up earlier. Let me force myself on that very first day to go to the gym early, no matter how hard or uncomfortable it may feel, I'm never gonna do it unless I sit with that discomfort and get myself to do it. Because once I've done it the first time, then it will start becoming a habit. Then day two will be 10 times easier. And before you know it, I am that future dream self who wakes up early and goes to the gym every single morning. Let me schedule in my calendar every day at 6 p.m. I must learn French on my phone for five minutes every day. It's easy, it's accessible, and I'm starting my future goals right now. So then I'm making that dream version of myself that I imagine all the time a reality. I'm literally creating her day by day by day. So when I get to my future, I literally made her. Step number four to your difficult day morning routine, you're gonna make a nice breakfast and this has to be healthy. And I know that sounds like hard work, you don't wanna do it, you wanna have some chocolate chip cereal, but you are doing yourself a disservice by giving in to that temptation. You wonder every day why you feel so tired and slumped, but you treat your body like a trash can. You're not concerned about what you're consuming every single day. You're putting way too much processed foods in there, way too much sugar, not enough nutrients, not enough vitamins and minerals. Everything you put on the inside reflects the outside. Your energy is gonna go all the way up once you start eating more fruits and veggies and proteins and skip on the useless foods that are not serving you like Nutella, like cereal. I always make a smoothie protein shake because it's super easy. It means I'm getting all of the things my body needs. First thing, protein, fruits, veggies. I'll add matcha in there so I get that energy boost and I'll also add turmeric powder in there to reduce any inflammation in my body. It's easy, it's quick, I'm full and I'm healthy. And just that there by making that healthy breakfast easier, I already feel more accomplished on a lazy day it's like oh you know what I did something good for myself today it's not about pressuring yourself into being perfect it's about taking care of yourself in little ways as if you're your own parent like yeah I looked after my body today I did that self-care and that is an act of love towards myself and then while you eat or sit on your breakfast you're gonna make your to-do list for the day but you're not feeling motivated so the key here is you have to write down things that you're going to look forward to this is a much more magical type of to-do list it's not your average one so in this to-do list I'm not gonna tell you to go to the gym and make sure you do at least six hours of work because you're having a bad day and that's okay but you need to be able to prioritize your most important tasks maybe you have a deadline coming up and you're like you know what let me just contribute one hour of work towards that 
And after that, I get to go out and see my friends for lunch. I get to relax and wind down with some Netflix at nighttime. You absolutely deserve to have an off lazy day. But even those are about balance. You have to be able to create your energy and create your motivation and with that comes discipline. So for example today I woke up exhausted and I had plenty of sleep. I did not want to get out of bed. I have been in such a rut today and I followed the to-do list method. So step number one was have breakfast, plan out today's YouTube video, then it was get ready. Make sure I do my hair all nice and I'm feeling myself. And then it was to sit down and film this video. And once I've done this, once I've put all of my energy into this task, which I didn't have all of the energy to do this morning, I can go out and do some shopping, which I'm gonna do right after. And because I'm looking forward to doing that task, I cut out all the procrastination, I sit down and I get on with the work that I'm supposed to do. And the last step to your morning routine is to get ready to look good for yourself. As I just said, I put effort into my makeup and hair today. And although it was tiring in the moment, as soon as I was done, I was feeling myself. It could be as simple as taking a long shower, brushing your hair, putting it into a ponytail, putting a little bit of mascara on, putting effort into your outfit, and instantly it lifts your mood and changes the narrative of your day. Chapter number two, it is now midday of your difficult day. And so the first thing we're gonna do here is do something. Do anything. Because this is gonna set you on a roll for the rest of your day, okay? You are now about to set the tone. You've had your nice, gentle morning routine, and now it's time to take that first productive step. This is an actual fact. The first step is always the hardest. And so the top method for productivity is to always do the first five minutes. Because the first five minutes seems impossible, okay? You, you don't wanna open your laptop, you don't wanna turn it on, you don't wanna open that Word document to write 5,000 words. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is open it, write your first paragraph, and then you're allowed to have a break. Once you've just started and gotten a few words on paper or started cleaning your apartment, you will then leave those first five minutes, you'll be on your break, and you will be 10 times more inspired and motivated to just get on with the rest of it. So on my difficult days, I always start with the lightest work task, something that is semi-enjoyable, I don't mind doing it, it doesn't require too much brain power. Once I've done those first five minutes, once I've ticked off that first task, which could be as simple as hoovering my apartment, making my bed, reading a few pages of the book, come on now I feel accomplished I feel more confident and I feel like my ability to get on with the day and do other tasks has now increased it's all in the first step step number two eat a good meal for lunch and romanticize it with lunchtime romanticizing this learning a new recipe on TikTok which looks fun but it's easy and it's gonna taste really good you can make a cute little iced beverage with it Sit down, watch some TV on your lunch break. You deserve it, you're having a slow day. Enjoy every bite of that meal and know that you're nourishing yourself and your body and you're setting your future self up for success, okay? No more eating instant ramen noodles every day. And step number three to your midday routine, learn high vibe versus low vibe. This is all about learning all of the little habits you do which are secretly impacting your mental health and your energy and basically sending you into this rut. Because ruts don't happen out of nowhere, they don't happen for no reason. So you need to figure out what you're doing to self-sabotage. For example, worrying and overthinking, consuming negative media, sometimes like the news, junk food, processed food, soda, not cleaning your daily environment because your environment is a reflection of your mental state, gossiping, comparing yourself to others, feeling jealous, victim mentality, too much screen time, not moving your body, judgment and criticism, or boundaries, dehydration, sleep deprivation, living in the past, chasing people, too much alcohol, staying indoors all day, romanticizing your sadness. We spoke about that in my last video. And then we have our high vibrational habits. These are energy givers instead of energy takers. Drinking water, going out into nature, being in sunlight, moving your body, exercising every day. Eating healthily, being with your loved ones, being with your pets, hugging a friend. Meditation, visualization and manifestation. Reading, listening to music that's gonna hype you up and put you in a good mood. Writing, journaling, setting good intentions, having a good sleep schedule. Self-love, self-care, taking the time to do your favorite hobbies. For me, it's being creative. Dancing, resting, planning out your future. Decluttering, making sure you have a nice, organized environment. Having an abundance mindset, staying as positive as you can on a daily basis. And then I want you to hold yourself accountable as to what you're doing to deplete yourself of energy and what you can start incorporating to make sure that you can start having a consistent, good mood and energy every single day. Chapter three, it is now late afternoon and these are the habits you're gonna follow to get out of your rut. 
You're gonna give yourself love, rest, and gratitude. I want you to say your affirmations. I want you to journal. I want you to have a conversation with yourself. Be your own therapist, talk through your problems. You wanna send an angry text to someone, you write it out in your notes, you let all of that out of your system. I want you to reassure yourself about how good you're actually doing and to remember all of the things that you used to wish for that you currently have. I want you to remember your gratitude for anything and everything. The big things, the small things, your ability to see, walk, hear, to have food on the table, to have friends, to have people that care about you, to be in good health, to have access to the internet. To remember that you're doing the best you can and that the fact that you're watching this video just goes to show how committed you are to becoming the best version of yourself, to making sure that your future days are better and brighter and to look after your inner child and your future self. For that, I'm proud of you. So you should be proud of yourself as well. Step number two is you have to do something different. Change it up. Change out the layout of your room. Take a walk around your city on a route that you've never been on before. Listen to a body playlist so you're feeling yourself. Go about your day as if you're in a movie. Sing in the shower, have an extra spring in your step when you're walking around. Learn a new skill. Read the kind of book that you would never really normally reach for. Work in a different environment, a different room in your house, the library, a cafe. This is so useful and a literal lifesaver if you feel like your days are slowly starting to blend together and every single day feels the same, boring and draining. You've got to change something up, have a brand new routine so you have something to look forward to and then you have a different environment where you can start finding the joy in lots of new small little things. This way you can wake up knowing you're about to have new experiences, that a different result can come into your life from what you're normally experiencing. Step number three, now that it's late afternoon, you have to schedule something to look forward to. Go on a solo date, schedule dinner with your friends. Plan cool, fun stuff. That is the literal key to productivity. If you say in your head, I have to stay home all day and do this and that and that and all these tasks and work all day until I have to go to bed, you're not gonna wanna do it. When life starts to feel exhausting, it is your responsibility to find joy and put it back into your life. Whether it's going on a date with your partner, whether it's going on a hot girl walk, going to see a movie by yourself. The key here is you have to reward yourself, even for your small wins and even when you don't win at all, just for existing, just for being you. Give yourself a little gift every single day. That is my favorite way to romanticize life and be happy. I used to have this limiting belief that you have to work all the time and you have to like be in hustle and grind mode and I don't have time for lots of sleep or to go out and eat out every day and watch TV. No, you are not a machine. You're a human being with feelings and energy that can be depleted at times and mental health that matters above all else. Chapter four, your night routine. This is all about slow living. Step number one, treat yourself at night. So my favorite thing is to get some snacks, turn on my cozy lamps, light my candles, grab a bar of dark chocolate, some popcorn, wrap myself in a blanket and indulge in some TV. Right now, every evening I'm watching Love Island. It could be a movie marathon. It could be re-watching your favorite Disney shows. I do that all the time when I'm in need of some comfort. You need to acknowledge that sometimes waking up and deciding to get on with the day is a very heavy and possibly overwhelming task and you survived it. You got through it, you did what you needed to do and even if you didn't do what you needed to do, that's okay. Your energy wasn't the same. You weren't operating at the same level as you usually do. Treat yourself, take it slow. Step number two, make a cup of tea, have that warm fuzzy feeling inside and then it's time to journal it all out. This is so you're ending your day, getting everything outside of your system, you're not harboring any negative feelings and you can go to bed with a clear mind and then not harbor any negativity from today into tomorrow because tomorrow we don't wanna wake up on the wrong side of the bed. We don't wanna be in a rut tomorrow. Tomorrow is a fresh, new, normal day. When I'm journaling, I'm not focusing on perfection. I'm focusing on writing down every single little thought in my head, why not? I'm focusing on literally documenting where I am in life, how I'm feeling because I'm imagining my future self reading this this negative diary entry and smiling to herself because she's like you know what I went through a tough time and I worked through it and I stayed disciplined and consistent and now in the future I'm in a great place and I'm, lo I'm looking back and I'm laughing once I've done an entire rant about how I'm feeling and getting everything out of my system I always try to write down a few affirmations or visualize my future and just write out a few manifestations what am I praying for right now why do I want to be in the future just to remind myself of my path and all of the possibilities in life so I'm going to bed with a hopeful energy rather than being hopeless the feelings you choose to experience when you go to bed at night truly determine how you feel when you wake up bursting in the morning and the final step to this chapter 
is to do your nightly meditation. This is another form of clearing your head. But at nighttime, what I like to do is I'll do my breathing exercise to really calm myself down, make sure that I'm getting rid of any anxiety that is there from having such a busy day. And I close my eyes and I visualize myself. I visualize my dream future ideal self, living my dream life as if I'm in a movie. In this meditation, reassure yourself that you are more than capable of achieving all of your goals because you will get there. Even if things feel slow right now, I believe in you. I'm so proud of you for staying till the end of this video. I know you might be feeling unmotivated right now, maybe a little bit hopeless, but I hope this video gave you that little surge of motivation. I challenge you to try and implement some of these practices into your daily routine so that you can get back on track. I know what it feels like to have those hard days, to not want to do anything, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. You will get out and you will be happier than ever. Comment down below and let me know what you thought of this video so that I can keep making these videos even better for you guys every time you come back to watch. I appreciate you, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.